Atlanta's about resilience. This is a city that was burned down at the end of the Civil War and has had many, many occasions where it had to rise from its own ashes. because everything we do is hot. Atlanta has this long history in terms of the strivers, African-Americans who have worked both through education and politics and the arts, and there's this rich history that you cannot shy away from. It has a rich history of making change on a mass scale. You know, it's a humble city, but people are very prideful. Um, and they have a right to be. You can feel the weight of the culture on your shoulders. By no means is there a feeling of, of completion or victory. Rather, it's more a feeling of an ongoing struggle to continue that, that work. Given the, the history of soul food in Atlanta and the culture built around it, I think that it ties the narrative together. So Martin Luther King would meet with Julian Bond and Maynard Jackson, and they would work on their plans while sharing a meal and meeting three, you know. The soul food restaurants in Atlanta that have been around for more than three or four decades were all in some way related to the culture that gave birth to the civil rights movement. One of the things that I find really unique about Atlanta's history is you see this willingness to take a chance. To go back to the Atlanta student movement, when I think about that, I think about this like almost fearlessness. There had been sit-ins at Riches for some time and the leaders of the student movement, who are all AUC students, um, met with Dr. King and said, you have to come and protest with us. We need to see you there. In October 1960, he did, he sat in with the students at the Magnolia Tea Room and they were all arrested. And one reporter asked him, you know, Dr. King, why did you finally do this? And he said, well, I met with them and they taught me I had to put my money where my mouth was. You have to be able to confront things as a leader in Atlanta. And I think that is something I see over and over again here. Even though Atlanta tears buildings down, there are parts of our history we still hold on to, and that's really special. The people and places that kind of made this place tick are fading. It's, it's, it's really sad for every 10 mixed-use developments that go up, um, you know, three or four really awesome historic things in Atlanta go down. Leaving the question, you know, where's the identity going to be in 10 years from now? How do you continue to evolve your, your culture and your city? without completely destroying the culture that, that gave birth to it. We have to first know our neighbors. We have to know, you know, the members of our community. If we can't see each other, first of all, as, you know, humans or human beings or have an appreciation for individuals for their individuality, then it's very difficult to work and think about them in terms that are uh, equitable. We're at a really pivotal place. The region's gonna grow by two and a half million people over the next 20 years. You don't grow by two and a half million people and not change. We absolutely have to be fighting for everything to make sure that this happens in a way that's good for people. Don't worry, cause one day this grind gon' pay, and what we say gon' manifest in this struggle day to day is just a test in this life you're living, I know it ain't the best. 
But I'ma put on my shoes and I'ma keep on grinding. Gotta keep my hustle, I'ma keep on shining. Can't knock my hustle, can't stop my show. Stay down for the come up and we gon' blow. And they gon' know that we came from the bottom. Now here we go. If we won't mow, if we won't mow. So don't worry. W.B. Du Bois says something to the effect of, there's a talented 10th, some of us who have been lucky enough to be educated, and you must go back to help others behind you. The White House invited us to bring two students up to the former First Lady, uh, Michelle Obama's Beating the Odds Summit, that, that really kind of celebrated kids who overcame barriers to not only graduate high school, but to get to college. The two young ladies were from Clayton County. They were um, went to Forest Park High School. And I didn't bring them to the airport. And when I ran into them, they had book bags. And I said, OK, did you check your bags? And they looked at me and said, no. I was. Uh, I was ashamed I asked them the question. Because they brought what they had. I'm glad to tell you that that young, one of those young ladies at, at Howard University now. The other young ladies over at Atlanta Metropolitan State College. Our kids are so resilient. That's what Atlanta's about. Come to Atlanta, the air takes different. Your heart beats faster. It's just something about it. Like everybody want to be hot love. To the youth of Atlanta, no matter how weird or crazy you think your idea is, or even you are, we need to hear you, we need to see you. Our spirit is alive and well with those kids, and somebody just needs to remind them that every day. Having this culture where there's a willingness to not only speak up, but speak up about your own internal problems is really important. And I think it's something that's part of a national movement today. I love the culture here because Atlanta is so full of diversity. We are a city that is built on diversity. And we do have a very unique voice when it comes to political and social change. I believe it's rare that you can have a city that had a Dr. King and a Coca-Cola. When you just look at the movement that was birthed here, there's a sense of, we've done it before, we can do it again. My name is Frank Brown, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Communities and Schools of Atlanta. Gavin Godfrey, writer and spoken word artist, Atlanta native. My name is Carl Injex, and I'm the owner of The Sound Table in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Pella McDaniels, and I'm the curator of African American collections at Emory University. I'm Courtney Chartier, and I'm an archivist at Emory University's Rose Library. Brian Gravel, I'm a urban designer, a writer, and a wanderer of city streets. My name is Vincent Robeson, and I'm born and raised in Atlanta. <laughs>